Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Murray Nickel. I'm an emergency trauma physician from Abbotsford, BC, Canada, which is a, basically a suburb. Uh, I'm a, uh, a member of the GAN team. And um, also, I'm a co-founder of, um, of an orga organization called Five and Two uh, Network, which is a... Um, uh, it's something that came out of um, my experience in, in Congo, where we lived for several years, where I got to know uh, at least one of the panelists there that, are, that, have, that, are, that is joining us today. Um, GAN is simply a network of people and uh, organizations in the Anabaptist community of faith involved in healthcare and coming together for mutual encouragement, learning, collaboration, partnering, and really friendship. So uh, before we start today, I just want to make sure that everyone's muted. Um, and also, if you have questions, put them in the chat box so that we can read them and then answer them. And then also um, the interpretation if you are a uh, French speaker, down below there is a button for interpretation and you can choose French. Um, you should also choose English because there will be a French speaker speaking and there will be an English interpretation. So the topic today is integrating faith and health. And uh, before we start, uh, let's uh, open in prayer. Uh, Kate, who I'll introduce later, can you uh, pray for us to start? I would be happy to. Thank you so much. Let's take a moment, settle in wherever you are. For many of us, this has been a busy day. Uh, wherever you are in the world, just take a moment to feel the air around you and thank God for this space that we can be together. God, we thank you and praise you for this conference, for the chance to meet through your spirit and through the internet from all over the world. May this be a time of uplifting your mission of health and healing and wholeness that comes straight from the heart of your son, Jesus. May this be a time of rich fellowship, of learning, and of building new kingdom building relationships. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to start by introducing the panelists. And uh, the first one, I believe, uh, is, let's see what comes up on the screen there. I think it's Delphin Kapasa Mulungo, who is a uh, physician from Kinshasa uh, DRC, Congo. He uh, has a lot of experience. Um, he's a doctor with a master's in public health from the University of Lorraine in France. He's also got some other diplomas, one diploma from uh, the University Center of Missiology in Leadership and Mission. He's a, a co-founder of Bomberger Health Clinic, uh, which is a clinic in Millican Chasse in a poor neighborhood called Camp Luca. And uh, there he also has created a professional training center for young people. Uh, he uh, has a very much a uh, holistic view on health. And his expertise is in health, education, and community development. So he's facilitated several programs there. Um, some of our five and two network stuff, which kind of focuses on asset-based community development, which some of you may have heard of. He's also been involved with Community Health Evangelization, CHE. Uh, he's a community mobilizer. He's also an elder at his uh, church there, Batilla Church. I just... I, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? 
I'm hoping you can hear me. Anyway, uh, the next is Kate Michelle Desjardins, who is uh, from Philadelphia. She's got a master's in public health and epidemiology and, and focuses on uh, the intersection of spirituality and uh, uh, physical and mental health. So that's really what we're talking about today. Uh, she's published papers in, uh, on the subject, and uh, she's also the executive director of the Mennonite Health Care Fellowship. And she's a pastor at the Mennonite Church in, in Germantown in Pennsylvania there. And um, uh, that, by the way, is the oldest Mennonite congregation, apparently, in the United States, uh, which is interesting. She also was a pediatric specialist chaplain, uh, chaplain for five years at Cincinnati House, uh, Children's Hospital. Next is uh, um, Rolando Santiago, who is from Maryland, USA. I think you're from Maryland. Are you actually from Virginia? I'm not quite sure, maybe on the border. That area confuses me. I don't come from there. But he works, uh, uh, he's, he's um, in the area in, Mon in Montgomery County uh, as a as chief of uh, behavior health and, and crisis services. He has a PhD in educational psychology and statistics from the University of Al Albany. Um, he once served as the executive director of the US uh, MCC and, uh, and for the Lancaster Minute Historical Society. He, he sat on several international boards and committees and has uh, vast expertise in leadership and health uh, sciences, health equity, um, research, strategic planning. Um, anyways, the, the list goes on. Uh, and then there is uh, Dr. Uh, Dodanim, who is from Guatemala City in Guatemala. And he's a doctor who specializes in di diagnostic imaging and as, with a subspecialty in epidemiology. And uh, he's the executive director of two private health uh, institutions there. Now, interesting about him, he volunteers uh, uh, as an advisor with various churches in the city and, and he, he teaches at a Mennonite church, which provides free educational services to low-income people. Uh, so I think that's sort of interesting. So the topic today is the integration of faith and health, really. And when Jesus was on earth, his message of a you know, transformed way of living, a kingdom life, was integrated with physical acts of healing. So there's no question that faith and health are integrated. The question is, to our panelists, is, is how is that integrated? How do we feel it should be? How have we? Um, how is the message of the of the gospel, uh, the you know, reflected in in healthcare? So, um, let's start with asking that question to each of our panelists. So, let's start with hey, um, let's start with Delphine. Um, I'm going to call each of you by one name and not a whole title because we're going to be personal and family-like here. So, and Delphine, I know from way back, so I get to call him Delphine for sure. Um, and you can call me Murray. Uh, so, uh, so Delphine, what, uh, what, and, and this is to you all, by the way, starting with Delphine, what prompted you to work in the field of health versus something else? Why not work somewhere else? And actually, actually, why not get involved in politics and get lots of power and, and money? That seems to what be the thing to do in Congo. I'm not sure. But what is it that prompted you instead to work in a poor community and um, in the healthcare? Sorry, Delphine, you have to unmute yourself. Unmute. Allô, ça va maintenant? Oui. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Um, Thank you merci very much. 
Cette question uh, m'avait été posée il y a plus I de I have 20... been asked this question a long time ago, many, 30 years ago. Uh, même d'ailleurs 30 ans par uh, un, un ami et un frère. 30 years a... ago by a friend and a brother. Yeah a eu une grande influence spirituelle sur moi. Who had a big uh, spiritual influence on me. Alors, uh, je, ma, ma réponse à l'époque était que je voulais être My... uh, uh, beaucoup plus près de, de, de la population servie. My answer de... was I wanted to be very close to the people and serve them. Au travers de, de soins de santé. Through uh, healthcare. Et à ce moment-là, il m'a dit, mais uh, dans tous nos domaines de and, vie, on peut, on peut servir. On est au service du Seigneur. This person told me you can serve the Lord in all all kinds of uh, domains. Et ça c'est vrai. Uh, and that's true. Mais j'estime pour ma part que la, le domaine de la santé nous rapproche de plus près de de la personne et the, mais de considérer the, cette personne healthcare is much closer from the persons and, and le puts us very close as like le, the subject of my research le sujet de notre amour et le sujet uh, de notre foi that's uh, sorry that's the the subject of, of our faith and of our love. Et avec, dans le domaine de la santé, nous, nous pouvons vraiment être le plus proche possible de notre prochain, non comme tout simplement lui offrant le service, mais in, in également... In healthcare, we can be the closest to, to our neighbor. Mais apporter de l'amour, apporter un peu de nous-mêmes. We nous can bring love, bring love and bring something of ourselves. Et uh, ceci m'a encore uh, uh, réconforté ma, uh, cette, cette uh, conviction lorsque uh, autour de ma communauté... Uh, and this was also strengthened when around me qui venaient d'une communauté très pauvre et many children coming from a poor community et qui mouraient faute de, de, de soins de santé basiques and, and they would die because they didn't have an, a minimum uh, health care ces personnes étaient au, à côté de, de, de notre communauté où il y avait une clinique assez uh, moderne mais These, these people were in our community where we had a quite modern clinic. Mais faute de moyens, ils ne pouvaient pas accéder et plusieurs de ces enfants, de ces femmes enceintes, pouvaient But ainsi avoir. But they didn't have the money, pour. and so many of those children and or pregnant women couldn't get there. Mais pas avoir accès à, à de soins de santé. And have the health care they needed. Yeah. Are, is everyone hearing? Delphi is speaking slowly because it has to be interpreted into English. So that's why it's a bit slow there. Is everyone hearing things or? Okay. Well, let's let's just keep going around the circle a little bit um, uh, with the same question. We can come back uh, to you, uh, Delphi. Uh, uh, Kate, um, maybe, you're, maybe you can uh, share with us an uh, answer to the same question. Sure. Um, you know, I got involved in this whole field of faith and health um, first because I have a younger sister uh, who has a rare form of muscular dystrophy, um, central core myopathy uh, for those in the health field. And I had a really hard time um with her diagnosis i was about 12 or 13 and it really challenged my faith and so from an early age i kind of had this sense that health issues and faith go together um and i also understand from our anabaptist traditions you know anabaptists have tended 
to be a bit more whole person in the ways that we think. And so because of all of those experiences, I went into pediatric chaplaincy. So I was a chaplain at one of the largest children's hospitals and chaplaincy is faith and health together. Um, it, is, it is walking alongside and working with families who are facing um, very serious health crises in their children. Um, and I worked actually primarily with adults. I was in a pediatric setting, but I worked mostly with parents and grandparents um, from many walks of life and many faiths, but that sort of sense of accompaniment and being with is some, you know, for me, I see as a, a significant part of living out the gospel. And then as a part of that, I got more into really asking the questions of, well, how exactly does faith and religion and religiosity and theology, how do those actually impact health? And that's where I got into research. And I went and I did a master's in public health with a real focus on faith and health. And so that has gotten me to where I am today. I do pastor a congregation, um, but I spend a lot of my time as well doing research in faith and health for a whole bunch of different healthcare systems. And what I think is cool about that is actually um, there is interest even outside of just Christian circles or whatnot. There's really is interest in how does faith impact health and how does health impact faith and vice versa, even in, you know, big research universities, there's more and more interest in this um, and in spirituality and health. And I love seeing that interest because I do believe that um, healthy faith and healthy access to spirituality impacts the body. Um, and there are ways in which by strengthening faith, we can strengthen health as well. And I think that's so important uh, to capture and to talk about. Thank you for asking the question. That's great. Uh, it's very interesting. You brought up some interesting things there. Um, Rolando, can you give us an answer to that question? Uh, <clears throat> greetings, everyone. And thank you uh, for, for the opportunity to answer this question. I came into the field of health um, almost by accident. Um, I had just completed uh, my PhD in educational psychology. Um, at the University at Albany in uh, the state of New York. And I had been involved uh, primarily in education um, in the past, um, but uh, I was called uh, by, by a friend uh, who had a position in the New York State Office of Mental Health, a position in research and evaluation um, in the mental health uh, field, specifically in children's mental health. Um, and I promptly took that because I, I just enjoyed uh, doing evaluation and research work, which was um, a lot of the focus of my, um, my graduate training. Um, and uh, one of the first projects that I got involved in was interviewing about 15 adolescents and children with serious emotional disorders. These, these were children that were, um, or adolescents that were acting up, um, had had uh, perhaps suicidal attempts, had been depressed, or had um, many other behavioral health um, issues. And um, uh, the, the area where I worked um, in this project was in, in the Bronx, of, uh, which is one of the uh, major boroughs, one of the five boroughs of New York City. Um, and most, if not all, perhaps 90% of the children and adolescents uh, that I saw were uh, what we in the United uh, States call uh, um, persons from communities of color. Um, uh, they, they might have been uh, um, Hispanics or uh, African-Americans or even from other, other cultures. Um, and many of them uh, uh, came from low-income backgrounds. Um, so it was, um, it was fascinating to me to interview, interview them um, for this uh, research project, but also their parents as well. And partly 
why I was attracted uh, to doing this work was that in my early 20s, I, I had a, <clears throat> a three-year uh, experience with clinical depression that I recovered from, but it, it had uh, it created deep scars um, in myself. And I think uh, that's, uh, that in a, in a nutshell is what uh, attracted me to the field of uh, behavioral health, which is uh, the one that I'm practicing now. Oh, very interesting. Um, let's go on. Uh, Dunaim, maybe you can give us an answer to that question as well. Sure. Good morning, everyone. A pleasure to be here. Well, how I came in the field of the health since child, I suffered accidents when I have an nine years old, um, really bad accident in my arm, a really trauma. And the doctors in the hospital, it's a hospital called San Juan de Dios, San John of God. I in English. And they are all suggesting to my parents to remove my arm, to cut it out. In that time, there are only a few doctors in the field of so vascular surgery. And actually, one of the chief of pediatrics was just returning from the US to have his specialty in surgery, vascular surgery. And that time uh, he made all the effort he could to save my arm. And I have my arm like this. So I passed there a few months in the hospital trying to recover. And I thank God because I have my arm. So when I came from this experience out, my main a proposal was to be a doctor, but in our country, the education, private education is really expensive. We only have uh, to access to a public education, uh, education industry. So when I had the opportunity to go to the university, my parents, they support me with all the resources they have. So in this way, I can study medicine. Uh, I believe my faith and the efforts of all the colleagues now uh, to save my arm, give me the push that I need to study medicine and to be the person that I am today. It, the university was really hard, but um, it's the only way that I found to giving back a little bit of I have received how much I received from God. So the only way I have been understanding uh, that I can give him back a little bit is to serve others in the same way others serve me, right? So I have a lot to share about this, but the main experience of this was that. Yeah. And something my parents say when I start medicine is the important thing here to have a medical title is that you will have the opportunity to serve other people like you. They need a doctor and they will try to listen to you. So the main issue to serve others was to to preach the gospel to them too, through the service uh, as a doctor. Thank you for that. Well, that's, that's interesting. Uh, you know, it's interesting that each of you has um, has talked about someone who's in, someone or yourself, something has influenced you very deeply. And Delphi, you talked about mentors that influenced you to serve, to serve and, and then serve in a poor community. Uh, Kate, influenced by your sister, and Rolando by personal experience, and and Donanim by by personal experience as well, physical injury. And I just think it's really interesting that there's these events that happen in our lives that influence us and uh, motivate us to to serve in this way. 
And um, uh, I think that's just really interesting. So let's go on to the next question then. Um, so let's get a little philo philosophical here. Um, tell us what is your concept of health? And I know Kate kind of got into this a little bit. You, uh, I think it's very interesting what you're saying, Kate, but others of you may have something on this as well. Your concept of health and is the uh, Anabaptist perspective significant in that concept? I mean, is that part of, of or, you know, your your theology or philosophy about health? Uh, so um, let's let's go around the circle again a little bit here. Uh, Delphin, why don't you start us off and and uh, tell us what you a little bit about your concept of health um, and how that's developed in your in your mind and how your Anabaptist sort of background or your faith, so to speak, um, integrates into that. Merci beaucoup. Um, uh, Thank le... you very much. The concept of health is, is something universal that means it, it's a, a, a right for everybody to access to health. And, and this concept uh, needs uh, some equity in access to, to health. And in our context, the situation of the environment in which we live. Uh, do, do you hear? Is the interpretation uh, working? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Ça, ça fonctionne. Je disais que ce concept, il, est, uh, il passe par l'accès. This concept go, goes to uh, an access to for everybody and to that there is equity there are enormous differences in, in this access to health and, and these big uh, differences have been shown with the pandemic that, that we have had recently with COVID. There are the rich countries had all the means to, to cope with the pandemic in, and in our, on our side and the countries with lower income, we have seen that the, those uh, countries were totally lost and there was a big, uh, uh, a problem of balance. This is real also in, in one, in one uh, country, you can have communities who, who, who get the, the best uh, health care and, and other, peop other communities in the same country who lack uh, of everything. And, and who cannot uh, access to health for their children, their women, and all per persons who are in need. The ideal is to, to have an access to health. But this is linked to our uh, Anabaptist values of, of love and sharing and equity between brothers and sisters and between uh, Christian communities. We have values that the Lord uh, gives us. In Matthew 25, the, the Lord says, I, I was hungry, you gave me uh, something to eat. I was thirsty, 
you gave me something to drink. You, I, I was sick and, and, and you have taken care of me. Uh, you can see right away how it's important for the Lord the, that we share and the val our Christian values. We have them in the uh, um, Acts of the Apostles. At the beginning of the church, there was this community, this community that was uh, putting all their goods uh, together. And what is uh, striking, the one who had a lot didn't consider he would have more than the other, but uh, he was just served like everybody one, uh, everybody else. There was really this uh, concept of sharing also in other areas of life, but especially in, in the question, in the area of uh, healthcare, it's important that there is a solidarity, a sharing in, in our uh, everyday life. We have to, to be uh, sensitive around us. If, if, I, if, if I have enough to eat, if I can go to the hospital, is it also true for my neighbor? for my community? Is there a possibility to share and help and to for health problems for others? These concepts are, are based on uh, the needs healthcare, uh, the needs of healthcare, equ equity and sharing. You cannot understand that in the world, our communities, there are some who, are, who have a lot of privileges and, and others are completely forgotten in their condition. For me, this is my experience. My condition was not very miserable, but it was unjust to see around us people created at the image of God, who were uh, rejected or who did not have the right to be, to receive care. And as Anabaptists, our faith goes along with health. health. That's what I want to share. Interesting, you know, this whole concept of inequality and uh, access to health uh, has, has been key in uh, what Delphin has been doing. I've been, uh, I've known Delphin for, I don't know, what, 25 years? I don't know, a long time. And uh, just, um, uh, you know, it's this, this piece in the Anabaptist sort of, um, sort of worldview is let's serve and let's, um, also uh, a care to equality or equal access uh, in, in terms of healthcare. Um, uh, Dordanim, um, maybe you can, uh, you, you're working, I think in a fairly poor community, um, are you not? And maybe you can uh, continue on, uh, give us your perspective. Sure, well, for me, health is the principal condition of human development. It's a state of well-being. And we only get there 
when exists a, a balance between between different factors, physical factors, biology, emotional, mental, spiritually, and social, that that allow us to uh, grow and development to get a development in every um, environments of the life, you know. But the relation of this with the religions, I believe that many religions, including an Baptist religion or theology, they re regulate conducts like um, what we can eat, how can we have the social behavior, uh, uh, about consumption of illegal substances, every bad kind of stuff of take care of the body at the temple of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, right? And if we make the studies, we will see where health and religious theology, they have an intersection there. For example, uh, the Mennonite World Conference have seven convictions there is uh, everyone shared in the Anabaptist world. And, the, uh, and of these seven convictions, the last three, they are very compatible with the concept of hell and religions. Like the number five, say the Holy Spirit, fields of power, right? And to trust in God in every aspect of lives in the way we can be peacemakers. And we renounce uh, every kind of violence and we love our enemies and we uh, try to get justice and share our possession to the needed. The number six of this conviction says, normally and uh, regularly we take together to worship God, to have the holy dinner, and listen to the word of God in the willingness to be responsible between us. Sorry, my translation to English. And uh, the number seven, the global community of faith and life, there is no boundaries, there is nationality or race or social class or gender or a language, but we are, are do our effort to live in a world without trusting in the powers of evil and giving testimony of the grace of God but the meanings of service to others, the caring of the creation and inviting all humanity to know about Jesus Christ as his own Lord and Savior. And this is very important for me because it inspires me the service of health in our communities. They are under development and they're suffering poverty, structural poverty and they are under development. So with these concepts will of health and religion is helping us to develop our program because we are focusing trying to not just treat the disease, we are trying to, to prevent the disease, to help in a spiritual way and to give him hope because we are there in the needed moment. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, Danim, you are talking about more a holistic approach, and um, uh, and also you kind of touched on some peace and justice issues, which seem to also uh, emanate from Anabaptist uh, thought. So. Actually, it's a good segue, Kate, for you to maybe uh, speak into this, because you talked about this link between spiritual and physical. Maybe you have something to say on that. Sure, yeah. I appreciate your um, your sort of 
hand gesture Dodanim, when you said if you look at the studies of sort of religion and health there's a point where things cross and that is literally true i have uh done some quantitative studies where i've been drawing graphs and i've gotten that cross point um that that's too much to explain here those particulars but we do know that faith influences health on so many levels and that has to do not just with well what do i believe and then somehow my body is healthier it's complicated and it has a lot to do also with what delphin and you were both talking about with justice issues um, because faith can and religion can also be seen as what we call a social determinant of health um, and can influence um, just so many factors. And I think of this in terms of Anabaptist theology, because in Anabaptist theology, we don't just focus on what Jesus did on the cross. We do believe in that and incorporate that but we also focus on the life of Jesus. Well, what did Jesus spend his life doing? Healing people. Um, and so we kind of have this holistic view that for true faith, there also needs to be engagement in social issues and health very much, I would say is a social issue that crosses all of kind of our major uh, other social issues because so often we are talking about bodies and minds, what Rolando was talking about, um, certainly the links between spirituality. And I do a lot of research on something called spiritual struggle. And I think earlier I was saying, you know, part of my story was, was having a lot of spiritual struggle when my sister was first diagnosed with her muscular dystrophy. She does very well now, um, but you know, I was a child. Um, and it really, I wouldn't say in that time I had mental health struggles, but I had spiritual struggles. Um, but I was lucky because we know that those spiritual struggles can influence mental health, but they can also influence physical health. Um, if you're having spiritual struggle over your health, you are less likely to see your doctor on time, to get certain preventative tests. Um, we even know that parents who are experiencing spiritual pain and sort of asking God why are less likely to um, do their child's medical treatments correctly. Um, so we, we know all of this and now we're trying to sort of incorporate it in our hospitals as well as in our churches um, and in our general culture to say faith is really important and 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 having kind of those spaces to talk about faith and health um, are vital it saves lives um, and i'm not exaggerating there um, and so that's how i how i see a lot of this that's interesting each of you have talked about this holistic uh, thing and um i mean i got personal experience with uh, delpha because he not only runs a clinic, but he's got like a workshop for young people there to learn skills. He's got uh, reading classes for children that aren't school. You know, there's there's all kinds of other things happening there. This real holistic approach, and not only that, um, there's this spiritual aspect that all of you have talked about, which I think is really interesting. But interesting to hear what Rolando says about this, having had personal experience and which has kind of, you know, kind of pushed you into a field. Um, uh, how does, how do, what, what's your reflection on this? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, like, like everyone else, uh, I also believe um, in that health is a holistic uh, thing. Um, it includes physical, emotional, spiritual health and the well-being of people. And uh, to achieve uh, health in a holistic way, a person cannot just rely on their own God-given personal, physical, emotional, and spiritual health. They must also have access to resources in the environment in which they live that also nurtures their health. Uh, Kate talked about social determinants of health. Uh, so, the, uh, for, for example, um, a child that is growing up uh, in a family and in a community uh, that provides uh, nurturing uh, resources, 
those are critical for that child's health or for anybody's health. Uh, these resources include shelter and food and education, healthcare itself, household income, a sense of belonging in the community, and, and more. Uh, so, and I, I believe that that concept of health is consistent with Anabaptist uh, values. And the two that I'd like to focus on is discipleship and community. With discipleship, if we are true followers of Jesus, we're going to care for our own health because it's the it's a way that we can also care for the health of others and serve others, as, as several of the speakers have uh, spoken about, um, which is also value and an Anabaptist value. And with a community, Anabaptists treasure life in the body of Christ, right? Uh, we believe in the community of faith, that we support each other. And uh, so uh, we are going through our life together in community. We're also going to care for the spiritual health of persons and, and seek the care and uh, physical and emotional and spiritual health of others and serve others. As, as other speakers have, have talked about. Thanks a lot. Uh, that sounds, uh, I think this is really interesting. You guys have a wealth of experience in this area. So this, is, this has been really good. Um, well, listen, um, let's get to just a few practical stories and things. I mean, how does this actually play out in your lives? Give us some examples of how this looks in what you actually are doing or have been doing. Um, uh, Dodanim, do you have something in Guatemala, something you can uh, maybe just tell us about and show us some examples of how this looks? Well, I really tap problem time because Many of the time, our communities, the artists, they are not in development or in health related. And it's uh, sometimes get a conflict, but if, because like I say before, uh, sometimes the people have incomes for paying uh, we say here in Guatemala, Facebook big for internet, but they won't do an effort to pay because of uh, cons medical consultations, right? And there is something need more educational, but we have a, a minimal social clinic where we are trying to give a free of charge access to people of low income resources who they earn less than one dollar per day so they can have access to a medical consultation and it is something we do daily um, we have a with the Menina church um, we have programs of education of health related to, to try to prevent uh, diseases. The hardest part of this educational program is related to COVID-19 pandemic that have put us in some difficulties. Um, the, the other part of this is with the later St. Church, they have been giving, what is the word? See, they have been donated a money for buying devices, medicines, and paying laboratory tests for the people of low income resources, not necessarily members of their church. So this will help us to have a better diagnosis of the current disease of the people. And they are having help in us in education programs so they can learn English 
and they can have access to programs they call self autosuffences. So they can have tools to increase their incomes. So we are trying to, to do a holistic work we work there, and this is how, in the way I see and feel, there, uh, my faith is in touching way. So, so what he did because it's something the people can see. It's difficult to talk to love, justice, um, environment, care, or majordomy of the creation to the people where they just have hunger and they're not receiving the solidarity from others, you know? And um, to doing this work, I feel we are closing and building the kingdom of God here and right now because sometimes many religions. Uh, we say, ah, the kingdom of God, you will get a better palace, you will have your own restaurants in the heaven, and uh, when you die, you will have a palace in heaven, and you will go with God, and uh, it seems like we only get better when we're going to, to be uh, at the side of God, you know, but in the, my perspective of of the mission of God have given us about the testimony of Jesus Christ is that we can build the kingdom of God here right now to our service, in this case, health services. And we can, like Mateos and Lucas says, we are the light of the world, the star of the earth. And this is the only way we can to, to share and be with the uh, people who is suffering me, suffering for any of the injustices existing in this world, economical injustice, climate. To get all the people the opportunity to get the development they need to, to have a, well, like a, the concept of health we say before, I have a, a integral or school titles but in the in the soul and the understanding they want their kids and wants to get a better education to have a better future so better, the other generations of our family have uh, better incomes to have uh, a better life if we can call it like that yeah okay uh, it's interesting that you, you talk about kingdom on this earth like when jesus prayed your kingdom come it's now isn't it and we are as an anabaptist christian community establishing christ's kingdom here on earth and uh, maybe that's one of the values that you're talking about the other thing that's interesting is i think you're quoting almost quoting micah 6 8 when micah says you know what's the sign of a good man that is to do justice and at the same time, loving mercy. Sometimes we kind of um, we are self-righteous in our justice and we kind of, well, we have to do mercy. But really the principle is we do justice and we love mercy. We just love passing that out. And then walking humbly. And you talked about that too, about you know, you know, not needing the latest cell phone, whatever it is, but walking humbly. And I, I think that's really cool. Um, so, Delphi, can you tell us uh, a, a few stories from your side of the world? Oh, you have to unmute yourself.
Parfait, merci. Alors, euh, pour nous, la, uh, cette intégration For us, this integration de la foi, a bit of faith with uh, health, the perfect model is, is, is Christ himself. This integration goes through uh, to, to seeing the fundamental needs, uh, holistic needs of a person who comes, uh, who comes with health problems as Christian, as Anabaptist. We, we have to listen to the person to see if the needs are only physical or if there are not other, other needs that are hidden, that are spiritual. We often see situations, we have people, persons who arrive who just need to be to be heard to have some attention to to get some comp uh, comprehension rather than physical physical uh, care we have a an example in the story of the the lame person uh, in the where we can have uh, take several lessons. In, this man was uh, healed uh, when he went uh, on himself. He could not arrive to Christ, but he had this uh, this community, this love of his friends who, who brought him to Jesus. And there was a sacrifice uh, on, uh, of his friends who, who, who brought him to, to the roof and put him down to, to Jesus. Uh, Christ went further than further than just words he, he he went to to discover the real person problem of this person it was a, a spiritual problem sometimes we do not see the real needs of our people and and we we see that this person came to us just so that somebody listens to them to be comforted or to find somebody to speak to. And we, we, we have been sometimes like uh, people who just, uh, we don't really listen and we just give what uh, they ask for. And that's not enough. As a Christian and Anabaptist, we need this uh, question of faith. With my staff at the hospital, if, if you, uh, as a nurse or a doctor, you, you can bring all your your knowledge, but on the other side, if we have not brought anything with our faith, then we have failed. Sometimes the persons who come, who are sick, this person is sick, but the, this person is also hungry. And, and so we, we have to consider all aspects. 
nous avons donné des oui. soins et nous uh, une rémunération. So, sometimes we only bring care, health care, but sometimes uh, but people need much more than just health care. We see these examples in the acts of apostles like Peter and Paul who come to the synagogue. This person needed money, but they, they, they had something else to bring to this person. And this was healing. Uh, and this person could completely leave his uh, situation and be and be healed. Uh, we, we have a special grace as Christians to communicate not only our know-how, but also our uh, know uh, be how uh, to how to be. This is our life and the, and the salvation, the, the hope we can communicate to others. These are a few words. Thank you, Delphine. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I think I can share your stories a little, one step further because I've been with you. And, uh, you know, poverty, I think, when it comes to uh, Camp Luca, where Delphine does a lot of his work, um the poverty is more than something physical i mean giving someone like peter at the steps where he was saying um it's more than here's some money it's actually we need to change your state of mind your 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 mental health needs to change and um poverty is really sort of a mental health disease rather than a lack of money uh, and so um, this holistic approach is just so important in a place like uh, where Delphine is working. And you can see it um, in one program that, that he runs there is called, uh, and we run it in different areas of the world as well. And it follows these principles that some of you have heard, asset-based community development. And that is rather than going into community and saying, hey, uh, let's assess your needs and, and sort of tend to your needs, it's actually saying, okay, guys, what do you got? Let's work with what you have. What are you passionate about? What are you excited about? So that's um, that's kind of interesting. Anyways, um, uh, Rolando, maybe uh, you can speak uh, into this on, um, I'd, I'd be interested to hear some of your sort of, sort of practical sort of um, examples of, uh, of um, faith and health on the field. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's interesting. Um, I ask myself, what is an Anabaptist doing uh, working uh, within uh, government uh, structures? That's where I work, and that's where I serve as uh, Chief of Behavioral Health and Crisis Services in Montgomery County, Maryland, which has a population of about 1.2 uh, million people. And th the example, Murray, that I was thinking about um, was a project that I've been working since I started about two years ago uh, in this role, which is to develop the cri behavioral health crisis services. Um, we, we have a lot of people that go into a behavioral health crisis and sometimes um, uh, communities don't know what to do with people that have uh, just tried to uh, attempt uh, suicide or uh, they may have, um, gone, uh, forgotten to take in, uh, their medications and have gone into a psychotic episode and uh, with risk of violence to themselves and, and to family members around them. Um, and uh, so uh, we, we have just many instances on a daily basis. Um, oftentimes it's, as, as you know, in any community, sometimes it's, it's the police that responds to these people first. Um, in Montgomery County, we're trying to uh, uh, create a force of behavioral health uh, therapists who can respond uh, without police and can de-escalate, de-escalate the violence. And that's where I see um, the Anabaptist values of uh, peace and justice um, and uh, 
uh, nonviolence um, coming in, in my own sense of self and my own sense of direction of how we need to develop these services. So we're hiring uh, these behavioral health therapists that are well, well trained to deescalate situations um, that are uh, at risk of, of violence. And we're even incorporating uh, peer, what we call peer support specialists. Uh, those are, are people that have uh, lived a lived experience. For example, people that in the past may have had a history of substance use and now are able to identify with those who are overdosing. This is not just a problem here in the US. It's, it happens globally in many, many communities. And we're figuring out that uh, training uh, certain, certain people, especially people with a public health training and behavioral health uh, training is, is the answer. And I think it's, it's also an Anabaptist uh, values answer um, uh, because we're not using force here. We're not escalating the situation that could result uh, in the death or a fatality. We're dealing about de-escalating situations, bringing peace, not just to families and to individuals, but to entire communities. And I can be more specific, but because of time, um, I can't uh, tell you all the experiences I've had, um, but, uh, but that gives you a little bit of a flavor how I integrate my own faith and my passion for Anabaptist values and integrate them into my work. Kate, do you have something to, to add into this? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a hundred stories I could tell, I think of sort of where this intersection lies. Um, I did a lot of work kind of towards the end of my time in clinical chaplaincy, um, working with folks who had strong religious beliefs and treatment. Um, and I'll just say kind of one thing that we learned is that families who have um, a stronger belief in sort of this idea that the body is sacred um, actually showed higher treatment compliance for their children. So we learned that and started doing a lot of work with folks, um, you know, towards treatment compliance. And I had a patient as well who, um, who was refusing to uh, use his breathing machine at night because he, he said it woke him up a little bit. And the doctors were saying, well, actually, according to your sleep study chart, you, you sleep better with it. But he swore that it woke him up at night and he just refused to wear it. Well, when I finally talked to him, this was a patient who couldn't walk. And he said when he didn't use the breathing machine, he had dreams that he was walking with Jesus. And those dreams were what he was living for is having that time in his sleep to be able to walk and to be with Jesus, which he was a very religious person. And so I was able to say to the medical team, you know, this is why he doesn't want to wear this breathing machine because it's actually interrupting his most spiritual time uh, that he has at night. And so we were able to then get everything on the table and the team finally took seriously and said, okay, we'll need to find a different breathing machine that lets you still have these dreams and still sleep in the way that you need to have these dreams. And so it, you know, it was a small thing, but it was a big thing um, because it was so important to him. And so I like to have these sort of very practical stories of the way when we can really remember that faith matters, uh, we can actually have a better outcome for everybody. Yeah, interesting. The other piece of this is, you know, uh, the Anabaptist value for the person. So we value um, the person. Um, we believe that people are made in the image of God. So if we are treating God in, this, in a sense, no matter who they are, we need to treat them with respect and, and with love. And so, and so we, uh, hopefully as Anabaptists, we take seriously everyone's issues and uh, approach them. But it's interesting here, uh, one of the questions kind of touches on this, and that is, 
you know, faced with a, a sea of issues and need and problems and so on, we're, you know, what we do is just a drop in the ocean. Could we really, you know, are, are we actually going to see any change, in, you know, in our little world that we live in? How can we really, um, uh, you know, help the transformation in our communities? And and I and I think there, you know, my answer to that is that I think we, I, I think Dodanim, I think you kind of touched on this, and that is, you know, you're in. You are where you are, and wherever you are, we exert this sort of uh, Anabaptist or our faith in what we do. And it, whether that be with our family or with your kids or with a friend or your neighbor, uh, but it definitely in our work. And, um, when, uh, and then going back to this verse that uh, Micah 6, 8, I think is another one to remember there is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly in whatever situation you are. And perhaps your little change can will, will spread to other people uh, and as you will be a mentor to others. Anyway, uh, that's enough of me. Uh, you guys, we don't have a whole ton more time, but I want you guys to, um, to maybe speak into that a little bit. Uh, um, in, so uh, you guys have some more things to say on that? I'll let any of you speak. Well, perhaps uh, when today was oh. this morning age is difficult to see miracles like the Bible says and many of the the polling of our communities right now perhaps like the Jewish people is still expecting uh, the prophet comes and saves us from all justice the second come and perhaps sometimes right now in many of our communities is having difficult to see the miracles of God in this era. Uh, I believe we need to work together with pastors and ecclesiastic leaders as health professional and integrates. The, because today and right now in the Anabaptist world, we don't know how many people of our communities get infected. We don't know how many leaders die of COVID. And we don't have a statistic, a statistics on that. And perhaps the pandemic uh, put outside these main issues where in some leaders, in some communities, they say, yes, we need to trust in God, but we don't trust in the vaccines because they have uh, the seal of the beast or something like that. I don't want to be a sinner in this way, but um, this is something that we need to work on too, to get closer to our leaders, to our pastors, to our communities, and uh, trying to give me the insight of the miracles of the modern era. In, in that other issue, the climate change right now is here, and many communities, they are not adapting to the climate change, they are hitting us, and this affects directly in the physical health and the spiritual and emotional of the people. Um, is perhaps I don't have a, a good answer to this, but we should do our, our best effort because if we not do it, who's going to do it? Where yes. is the spirit, the spirit of God inspired us? In every prayer I give, I pray for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, 
inspire us to do more than what we should do. Yeah, the 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 uh, it's very interesting, and uh, the thing is that uh, when we when it comes to like a pandemic, like you were talking about, it's really uh, our opportunity to think about the other, isn't it? That's what actually is good for in a pandemic is thinking about the other, and uh, that's really sort of an Anabaptist service model is really thinking about the other. So um, I, I I just. Are there other questions, uh, perhaps? I, I know that I'm getting prompted here to to make sure that we cover some questions from the community at all uh, before we uh, close off our, our program here. We have a few minutes yet, so. I know that one question I think has been um, this issue of, of um, of rest, um, you know, what do you as health workers, um, okay, so you're involved in actually quite nitty gritty, difficult situations. How do you find rejuvenation and how do you find rest while you're in this, you know, you know, in the difficult, the d difficulty of the situation you're in? So, um, maybe open up that question to you guys. Do you, do any of you have a have some advice there? Murray, can I expand on that? I mean, we've talked sure. a lot about people who are are not well, right? Who are unhealthy. How can we, or what is our responsibility um, as Christians to think about our own health and to improve that kind of general health? of other people like clean air, clean water, um, information about good food. Yeah, good. Uh, uh, Murray, uh, <clears throat> perhaps I can um, uh, start uh, some ideas, at least from my own, um, th the way that I care for my own health and also my mental health um, is uh, I, I have uh, daily daily routines, and I, I I really deeply believe that it's part of my um, following of Jesus and what uh, how how He lived His life. Um, these these routines can include uh, taking time to exercise. I like, for example, I like running, but also eating healthily, as as a speaker suggested. Um, that's important to me. Um, also participating in my community of faith, being an active member, um, being, being, uh, having a sense of belonging. I attend Neffsville Mennonite Church um, on a regular basis, and, and I, I teach Sunday school. To me, all of those are, are practices, uh, both from a, a spiritual, but also a physical and mental health perspective that, um, that help me, um, that I believe, Make me a better disciple, so I can then serve those who are broke, who are broken, um, and I I can then truly do the kinds of things that Jesus asked us to do in the Sermon on the Mount. I I really appreciate that that question. Yeah, yeah, maybe we just stay on that topic because we don't have a whole ton more time. Um, do any of you have other suggestions for people involved in healthcare, particularly in difficult situations as you all are in, or challenging situations, I should say? I would like to say something. So Sometimes it's not easy to take care of oneself in, in difficult situations uh, that are chronic when, when you have these uh, problems every day. What I do is sometimes uh, to, to sh share uh, of to, 
to meet friends, to talk about uh, what I have experienced. I am encouraged and it gives me strength. And we, we can, we always, uh, I could, I can always uh, remember every many little things that gave me joy in, in my job. When you receive a, a, a child and desperate parents with very little uh, resources, we try to to bring what we can, our expertise, and 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 after some time, you can you can see this uh, child uh, playing again. This allows us to forget sometimes everything that was difficult before. The, and we have to take our life like the Lord gives it to us. And we, tr we have to accept and bring joy. And this is most important. But it's important to have time with the family, with the children, uh, with with the the people. You know, this sort of debriefing kind of thing of of having a community around you. And Anabaptist uh, sort of principles really is in community. I think Rolando, you mentioned that. And community is very, very important for rejuvenation, I think, uh, and for myself. And I think maybe many of you would agree with that. Maybe we have uh, just a tiny bit of time for some more, uh, another comment or two from, from the panel. Um, what, do you have anything else to say on this, any of you? Sure. I have something to say, but I would indicate to. <laughs> sure. Kate, you know, yeah. I, this is a great question. Um, you know, I, there's a couple ways that I think about it. The first um, is I think about sort of that biblical piece um, where I think Jesus says, you know, I don't come to heal the healthy, I come to heal the sick. And so I sometimes think when we think about health, we're all sick in so many ways. Um, and so, you know, feeling that sort of need for healing, I think is a part of being healthy. Um, and with that, as we've said, the need for community um, and the need for kind of space um, to, to, explore how your own faith and spirituality is working with your health. It's, you know, I, I always say all of us have room to grow all of us. If we stop growing, then we're dying. Um, and, and I think that is especially prescient in terms of faith and health, because we know that a healthy growing spirituality, um, is something that can impact our health. Uh, for the positive. So for instance, one of the things that Mennonite Healthcare Fellowship is doing this year, really um, for healthcare workers, but also kind of in this vein of, um, you know, for kind of healthy people that want to like continue to be even healthier is we're looking again at the five life standards from more with less um, that include um, learn from the world community. So here you are living out that standard by being here today, um, nurturing people, doing justice, non-conforming, um, and some of these core Anabaptist values and how they apply to our life. So I think that ongoing learning about health and looking at it from new angles, um, which again, I, I agree is best done in community. Um, I think is one of is one of the keys. Again, I think it's why we have the institution of the church. Like God gave us the church to be in community, um, and ideally, the church is both a place for healthy people and it is also a place for all for sick people because we are all sick in so many ways. And so it's this kind of constant interplay of those things. 
Well, thank you a lot. Let's. Let, I'm going to just close in a story. That's uh, Kate. What you said there, actually, the good closing itself. Uh, but let me just close in the story. I remember uh, in Congo when I was there, this nurse used to come over all the time and ask for me to help him with this this uh, clinic he wanted to open. And so he kept on asking me for these things and asking. And finally, he said to me, hey, Dr. Nickel, you, you're a friend. You're my friend. You need to help me. And then I said to him, actually, you're not my friend. You're not my friend because you're just here to get some help. You, you actually aren't interested in creating community with me. And that really shocked him. And actually, the next week, he came over and he came over some bananas and some so on. And he said, hey, let's just, let's just talk about life he, it's just him saying let's just i just want to know about what's how, how are your kids and let's just talk about other things and we actually became friends after that and we actually created full spot that was rest and when i actually was in community with people uh, around me in congo so at any rate um maybe i just kind of uh close with that I, I just want to remind you all of Gan and this this uh, uh, sort of effort of ours to create a health community and support one another. And this is what this is all about. I also want to thank uh, Delphin and Rolando and Kate and uh, Dudanim uh, for their um, participation here. And uh, so I will, um, uh, uh, I guess, for my part, uh, I will uh, close off and uh, wish you all um, a good day.